Hi, Misha here, and late last summer, two things happened, and both guy will inform this video. First, Fox was looking to buy a new 12-gauge self-loading shotgun. Second, Sammy the Dwarf asked me about kind of doing a video and my thoughts on the new Benelli M4 Generation 2 Gen 2. So... We're going to cover that in this here video. And of course, as always, if you could, please do like, share, subscribe. And if you'd like to help support us, there's a link to some Patreon stuff. Let's get into it. Me being me and a fan of Benelli's for 25 years, I brought three out for Fox to try. A more or less basic M2. The benefits of this, it's lightweight simple it uses their inertia system and it is by far the least spendy then i brought out a current generation m3 this is the convertible semi or pump and it's about mid-range price and of course, for that range trip, I also brought out my trusty old M4. This is a somewhat dated model by today's standards. But to be fair, there have not been very many changes since the, I picked this one up and well up until 2022. So with that, let's let him fire each and then get his opinion. Vanilli M2. And you learn how to work a Benelli. <laughs> there we go. Benelli M2. Click. Benelli M3. Did it here, didn't it? Yep. Clear. That's better. Benelli M4. I knew it. An LEM4. Beautiful. Hot take, first impressions. An LEM4 all day. M2 <laughs> kicks like a mule. M3 needs a good break in. M4, it's comfy. We did a full video on the M3 back in November. So if you saw that, you know that, yes, this thing has now broken in. It was just an initial break-in thing. It happens, especially with shotguns. So, yeah, he wasn't. The M2, just, they're, they are reliable. But, yeah, this one has the standard size controls. Typically, they're fixed stock. This is the current M3. It's interesting because while it does use a version of their inertia system, it's actually located forward. The spring and everything is forward. It's also interesting because it has a 19 and a half inch barrel versus the others having 18 and a half inches. Tube is basically the same style as the M2. Longer on this one. Pick rail on top. Five position stock. But this is just an extension for the uh, stock it doesn't house anything the m4 uses their argo system which has dual stainless steel gas pistons under the handguard one on each side <clears throat> they do still have kind of the rotating benelli bolt in here is a secondary system and like the m1 m2 there is a recoil spring in this extension so you can't really do a top folding stock with this. And this is, again, the standard size controls. So yeah, he picked an M4. And so we've got him one ordered in. And his looks very similar to mine. Early on, they had only a two-position extension in and out. But very soon, they went to a middle notch. So three. And... Some M4s have Benelli chokes that can screw in and out. Others have a fixed cylinder barrel. The only 
difference of note between his later M4 and mine. Mine still has the metal trigger guard, but a long time ago, several years, they switched to a polymer trigger guard. It's not a problem. So that was uh, that was Fox's pick. I did a video over on my personal channel, getting his gun ready for him. With that, let's see how he likes it. Fox's very first shots, they're the brand new M4. So far, so good. Now, that is still a Generation 1. What about the Generation 2? And which is better for you and us? Which one should you go with? So let's uh, clear the deck and kind of move over to uh, Sammy's inquiry and talk about that. And I basically have found six major differences between Gen 1 and Gen 2. Number one, we begin with probably the most noticeable and possibly important change. Gen 1 has a two-piece synthetic handguard. It's light, but it has nothing to grip onto really. No stop, no grip, no holes drilled for rails. Generation 2 comes with what Benelli is calling a multi-rail. This is a monolithic piece. It installs as a single unit, sliding around the barrel. And while it is metal, it's actually not adding as much weight as I anticipated. And of course it uses the same bracketing system, so they should be reverse compatible, no reason not. And this would allow you, of course, to install attachments, foregrips, lasers, lights, what have you. In the box, they even supply you with three relatively short rail sections and wrench. As far as I know, this is M-Lock. Looks a little different on the holes, but I believe it is M-Lock compatible. If I'm wrong, correct me. Please do. It's on the bottom. This would also work well as ventilation, as a handguard heat shield, even on the top. You know, wrapping around the top of the barrel, protecting you, but still letting it cool. I will say... While it does protect the gas pistons, they're not directly exposed, it's not completely sealed up as on the original. Well, you know, this may not be M-Lock compatible. You've got these holes here, but then there are smaller holes. And when I took these rails out, I noticed that they have direct screw holes in them. Comes with quite a nice little simple torque wrench not just a standard allen key and it has guides so it won't flop around when you put it on it's Benelli so it's as well thought out as you'd expect you can mount it up here uh, I don't see holes here and you can mount it below And I went ahead and put one on top because I was curious if it would line up with the rear rail here. While it's close, it seems to me this sets a bit higher. At least this section that they give us. Again, it's really close, but I think this is sitting a little higher. Again, this is not my field of expertise. I fully admit that. They may be. It's just, if it's much taller, it's not by a whole lot. I just thought that might be something people would want to know because um, of mounting maybe a magnifier back here and a dot up here. I don't know. They're close, but they're not completely. This still does feel a little higher to me. 
course, a lot of people would probably want to mount this below for a foregrip, myself included. So yeah, that uh, handguard set with three, and these rails are metal alloy, and they have three screw holes, not two. This handguard does feel very quality in my inexpert opinion into my mind kind of jumps out at me as the biggest thing for generation two but far from the only thing number two when well, we talked about the forearm furniture let's talk about the butt arm furniture that's what we call it right the buttstock this is of course the traditional military m4 skeletonized stock with cheek riser it's to my mind very iconic the gen 2 though has this style same stock is on this m3 and is also on the supernova although the extension inside is different because of the different systems and here they are fully deployed with the traditional stock you press this button in and then twist to the right and then twist back to lock it with the generation 2 you just press the button usually there's a small amount of wiggling and then you just pull it out to the to where you want this is fully deployed notice that there are notches in this tube there's a total of five positions for both of these and of course like i said this is three so a little bit more fine adjustment although the overall length of pull is still roughly the same and here they both are this is in the middle position this is in position three again very similar the comb is a little different but even that is not far off just a single piece it's up to you what you um what you prefer certainly a different look but functionally the generation two does have more going on Second shots from Fox from the M4. Oh my God. Number three is something I'm seeing on a lot of new Benelli's. This is the traditional sling swivel. It can be rotated to the left or right or center. You have to remove this ring here. And of course, with this stock, there are a couple of different ways you can attach it. A bar here or a snap hook hole there. The Generation 2, though, is like the M3 here and some M2s. It has a QD sling swivel on this M3. And even though the mount is different, this is still more like the M4 mount. It's still a QD pocket. You can rotate it to the right or center, and it just pulls out. Interestingly, it comes with a relatively thin, looks like about a 1-inch ring, but I would imagine any QD would work. I like that, but I kind of wish they would um, do a QD back here. There's a slot for a sling, and it's actually a wider slot. But I'm not seeing much else. Kind of like they missed a trick there by not giving it a QD point. And no, this is not. I actually just double checked to make sure. No, that is in no way QD hole. Oh well. So different front sling attachment. And that's actually quite useful when you pull the barrel for cleaning disassembly. You can just unhook this without having to remove, unthread, unlatch your sling. So quite practical. Number four, an oversized bolt release control. Here's the standard one that's pretty well universal on most Benelli's. But like this M3 here with this enlarged control, Generation 2 has it as well. The actual hole in the receiver is the same size. It just flares out. I don't know if you can see, but there's a bit of a lip here. And, yeah, I can see that being of a benefit. It would be 
easier to hit accidentally, but also easier to hit intentionally. Here's the old school button. Easy enough. Here's the new one. Certainly easier if you have gloves. A lot of room to really get a leverage on there. Box M4 again. Dude. Number five, you've probably already guessed it, the bolt handle. And this has been something, this kind of rod style, that a lot of people who've bought M4s do replace. I never really bugged me too much, but I admit it is relatively small and thin. It does have a bit of an hourglass figure to it, so it's not like it's just straight. But the new version has this new style here. Just as this uh, M3 does. And some modern M2s as well. No question, it's easier to grasp. Probably would also make it a better forward assist or you know easy way to reach up and manipulate the gun manually as you saw when this gun up here was main, uh, malfunctioning early on so oversized bolt handle oversized release and Benelli still classifies their cross pin safety as uh, oversized although it's pretty much the same throughout but yeah not much more to say about that. That's something that a lot of people replace on the aftermarket, and now it comes from the factory. Number six surprised me and is actually a little interesting. And I'm not sure why they did it. Or if it's on all models or just the, this 11714. The older ones, be it the 707, 70. Three, the 715, the 721, like a lot of M1s and M2s have removable chokes. You can install different chokes to get a different pattern, and they usually come with two or three tubes. The 714 does not. It is a fixed cylinder bore. Interestingly, the barrel flares out here for the choke just a little bit. I can't see it on camera. This still kind of has that step up or flare, but it's just for that. Now, there have been some M4s that have fixed chokes. For example, the military's M1014 and the civilian 1014 have that as well. Also, most of your 14-inch entry barrels are fixed for kind of obvious reasons. So it's not unheard of to have a fixed choke bore, but considering so much of this generation two is for flexibility, I found that a little interesting. Kind of makes me wonder why. So that is number six. I'm sure there are a few other differences that I'm not you know, cottoning on to right away, but uh, those are the ones that jumped out at me, you know, with inspection. Well, people should be happy to know that the Generation 2 still comes with a full glossy manual. They haven't gone to the newer manual styles like a lot of companies or just no manual at all. You also get a sticker. You still get the Benelli oil bottle. Here are those rails we already looked at, and of course here's the OEM sling swivel. But again, any should work. And they still come in the same box as always. Benelli is a little slow to change, and that's not a bad thing. Picking these up and moving them around weight-wise, there's not a huge difference. This handguard is by necessity a little heavier than this. But on the other hand, I do think this buttstock, being more synthetic compared to this one, which is mostly metal, this is a little lighter. So you've got a lighter stock, heavier handguard, and that means when you pick it up, the Generation 2 is a little more front heavy. 
I don't think overall it's a heavier gun to speak of at least, but it seems a little less balanced than the traditional Generation 1. Otherwise, yeah, these are the same gun. They both have an 18 and a half inch barrel. These both have a two-piece tube that holds seven rounds. Same mil spec disassembly. They both have a blade front sight and a fully adjustable rear. You can actually use the rim of a 12 gauge shell to adjust windage and elevation. They both have the military style takedown that just requires a bullet tip or similar to remove the trigger group and it all comes apart. Both of them have a short pick rail on top that's bolted on for optics. And both have kind of a mixture of anodized finish on the alloy parts, phosphate, parkerized finish on the steel parts, and hard chrome for the inside of the bore, and stainless steel, as I've mentioned, for the piston. So that's all the same. Same pistol grip, same overall length. Of course, they're both chambered for 12 gauge, 2 and 3 quarter, and 3 inch magnum, but they cannot do three and a half inch. Fox just can't put the M4 down. <laughs> Dude, this gun is the bee's knees. Okay, Grandma. So Generation 1, Generation 2, which do I prefer features? What do I like? Let's start at the stock. Okay. Five positions is nice, a little more adjustability, and it is quicker and easier to adjust. But this is a very durable, very solid feeling stock, and I do like the comb system on it. And this has one too, but this stock just feels a little bit cheaper, and I'm using that as a relative term. So I, I definitely prefer the classic stock, but I fully admit part of that is this is just the classic M1014 look to my mind. You know, your mileage may vary, especially if you like find adjustments in the stock. Handguard. I still prefer the synthetic one, the traditional, but I have to admit, I like this M-Lock handguard more than I thought I would. It doesn't add much weight. It's a single piece. You don't have to bolt it on and off. It slides on. It fits very tight. Again, it's not... Really exposing much of your gas system. Look, if you needed rails, I like it. If, if you needed a rail handguard for accessories and stuff, I think this is a well-executed one. So, while I'm not going to be putting it on mine, I objectively think it's probably a pretty good upgrade for your majority of people today. The... Charging handle, I have to admit, is is an improvement. And similar, the enlarged controls. I don't mind the original ones. I'm so used to them by now, though, that it's kind of hard for me to say. Trigger pulls are the same. Nothing new there. I do think the enlarged controls do give it more of a um three gun competition look these look much more stark and all business and then finally the barrel i do find that change going to the fixed choke interesting and if i could transfer one feature to my gun it would be that mostly because i don't care about the interchangeable chokes it's just one more thing to clean and also because again the m1014 has that feature instead of the removable ones. So of all the new changes, that's probably the one I like the most. As far as the front sling swivel, I do find this a little odd looking to have a very commercial sling swivel on a military gun. I think while I don't mind the QD pocket, I would probably put a different swivel on, probably a larger one, maybe one with more of a matte finish, but you know, that's that's doable. Overall, it's a good improvement, and I could see where this would appeal to 
law enforcement users, competition shooters, although it doesn't seem a gun necessarily geared towards military as much. The stock would be maybe a little too easily adjusted in the field. These controls might be a little too easily hit, especially this. Maybe I'm wrong. The handguard I could see as being something a military would want, and again the barrel is actually military style, so there you go. But um, yeah, it's come up before, generation 2, and it's a good improvement. But Fox has been shooting my generation 1 pretty much ever since I got it, and so when he wanted one I think he too just likes the classic look. Although I would not be surprised if he does some of the improvements like the enlarged controls and the forearm. Also, I could see for him the interchangeable chokes actually being a positive because of what he wants to do and uh, that giving more versatility. But those are my thoughts. What are yours? I would enjoy hearing which style you prefer and why. Or maybe you would like to pick and choose features from each. Let's have a discussion about Benelli's, because you know I'm always up for that. I always enjoy, do, enjoy doing Benelli videos. They're just fun shotguns, no matter how you slice it. I even, as I said at the beginning, enjoy the M2. It's just, it's, it's, it's a wild ride. But no, the M4 is a very gentle gun. It's very forgiving on ammunition. It is the definition of buy once, cry once. I've spoken to very few unhappy Benelli M4 owners. And now that includes Fox. He seems to really be enjoying his. Anyway, I'll let you go. If you could, please like, share, and subscribe. And again, if you'd like to help support us, whatever, please check out the link to the Patreon. You can request videos like this be made, ask questions, do that kind of thing. Basically, just engage. This is Misha, and also on behalf of Fox, we'll catch you very soon next time.